I'm squidding right now, don't care. Squidding, and it feels so good. So good. Go ahead. Wow, this guy's going slow. What's up, God Harley? Um, a long time ago, people asked me about how I felt about, uh, custom bikes or extended swing arms or both um, if you don't know my bike is stock stock suspension I mean stock uh, swing arm length and I'm going to keep it that way I like it that way for the record I've never ridden a bike with extended swing arm uh, before I bought my bike I like the look of it before I even ever touch the bike, I like the look of it, especially the high boost with the extended swing arm and the fat tire. So as I do with most things, I started researching how much it would cost, what I had to do, this and that. And then uh, upon researching, I found out that it negatively affects your, your handling, uh, which I didn't, I didn't think of, but obviously, logically, uh, the physics of it makes sense. The longer your wheelbase, the worse your, your cornering is. It's like, you know, you see a big gigantic bus or a small car. The smaller car is going to turn tighter than the gigantic bus just from the sheer length of it. Now, a lot of people get the extended swing arms. Well, a lot of it is the looks. And for other people, it is for looks and for the fact that if you have an extended swing arm, if your rear tire sticks out, further than your takeoff speed, your acceleration is greater without, and it decreases the chances of you lifting the front tire. It doesn't make it impossible, but it decreases the uh, chances of that happening, which in turn lets you put more power to the ground, which makes you accelerate quicker. So for guys who are drag racing, uh, drag racers, for guys who are drag ra racing, that is something that they commonly do is extend the swing arm. Or a lot of guys who just like the look of it in a fat tire. Now, when you make it the, six, uh, the swing arm longer, you get a, a big fat tire, you're chopping up your hand capabilities. And as soon as I found that out, I wiped any thought of extending my swing arm out of my brain. Contrary to popular belief, even though I ride a Hayabusa, I want my cornering capabilities. I want my handling. If you don't know what type of rider I am, I'm a very spirited rider. You don't see so in my videos a lot of times, not all the times, but because I pick roads that are easy for me to vlog and be distracted on without having to think too much because it's hard for me to think of what I'm going to say when I'm dealing with a lot of traffic. That's why you see me a lot of roads where it's uh, divided highway. So I like my handling. I want this bike to handle better than it does. If you heard me before, I said the R1 that I drove is amazing. It handles wonderful. I wish my bike handled as well as R1. But as, as a sacrifice I make for the size of my bike that fits me better, that's a, a little bit of sacrifice that I make. But it's th this bike still handles well. It really does. As compared to a 600 and a 1,000, it, it, it handles a lot better. A high boost handles a lot better than people think it does. It is heavy, it is big, but you would be surprised if you have if you never rode one. So that being said, all my thoughts of extending my swing arm were like, nope, not doing it. Uh, I have no desire for the big fat tire. And I know that comes as a surprise to most people who have preconceived notions about high boost riders. But I like my, my handling. I like cornering. So, that's why I don't do the swing arm. As far as customizing, I'm not a fan of huge customizing. I like the look of it, it's amazing. 
I'm not a fan of customizing. When I, when I say customizing, I mean mostly cosmetic, some mechanical. Like we see a bike that's mostly cosmetic, cosmetically is its word, customized. I've noticed that bikes that are heavily customized come into a lot of mechanical problems. From, from fault of the person who customized it, and they just didn't take the care or the time to do it right, or just that, you know, when you customize things go wrong. When you're changing, changing the bike from the manufacturer's specifications, you're gonna run into a lot of uh, murky territory with problems in your bike. I, when I rode uh, a heavily customized bike, I noticed so many mechanical problems that irritated the crap out of me. Is she a hooker? Hooker with house shoes? See, that's wrong. Why she gotta be a hooker? Why can't she be somebody just walking across the street? See, that's my bad. I'm a bad person. Bad, bad person. She's probably a nice lady going home to her kids. I'm the hooker. But I'm the hooker in my heart. <laughs> Not see him. So when you customize a bike, you're gonna most likely run into problems later on because of it. And that's why I like to I prefer to keep mine stock. Now when you're doing like a performance customization, that's uh that's a different story. Sometimes you can a lot of times the idea is to make your bike more efficient. Uh, you know, adding better brake lines, brake levers, tuning your suspension. Stuff like that is supposed to make your bike run and function better. If done obviously properly. Installed properly. So, alright guys. Have a good morning, good night, wherever you are. Good night and good luck.